Right, 3.1, permutations with non-ordered elements. The number of permutations of n objects when p of one type are identical, q of another type are identical, r of another type are identical, and so on, is the following. n at a is equal to n factorial over p factorial times q factorial times r factorial. Now, if a number of distinct objects needs to remain in a specific order in a permutation, you divide by the factorial of that number. So let's look at a couple of examples. Example 1. Compare the number of arrangements of the sets of letters A, B1, B2, B3, and A, B, B, B. A1, A2, B1, B2, and A, A, B, B. So looking at the first one, let's look at A, B1, B2, B3, and A, B, B, B. Now, Looking at the first one, A, B, B, B is the same as A, B, 1, B, 2, B, 3, A, B, 1, B, 3, B, 2, and A, B, 2, B, 3, B, 1, and A, B, 2, B, 1, B, 3. And what that is, is I was able to switch around the, A, the B, 1, B, 2s, and B, 3s over here and I had the original over here. So as I switch all the different ones here, that's equal to just A, B, B, B here. So in this case, the B's are not unique, and because they're not unique, we only have one version of this A, B, B, B. But here the B's are unique. They each have their own subscript numbers, so they are not, they're specifically, each one is unique, Therefore, there are four possible changes of A, B, B, B. And then there's A, B, 3, B, 2, B, 1, A, B, 3, B, 1, B, 2. So actually not four, sorry folks, but there's actually six. Six different versions of A, B, B, B. Now, if I switch it around and go B, A, B, B, I will get the following. B, A, B, all of this, and we switch it around, and notice we have six versions of B, A, B, B. And again, we do it again for B, B, A, B. And again, what we end up with is all the different changes, folks. If you notice all the different changes, that's what we have going on here. So here, when we do all of these, what we're noticing is that for each of these values, we have 6 times 4, which is 24, A, B, 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 24, A, B, B, B. And where we get 24 is from 4 factorial. This one, there's only 4 possibilities. Where do we get that? We get that from 4 factorial, which is the 4 letters, divided by 3 factorial, which is the 3 letters that repeat themselves. So let's see if we can figure out the easy way for this one. How many possible ways there are to be able to have combinations? For the first one, because there are four unique letters, it's 4 factorial, which is 24. And the second one, what this one will be is 4 factorial, because there are four letters, divided by 2 factorial times 2 factorial. When you do that, there's only six combinations of A, A, B, B. All right, next. A hockey team ended its season with 12 wins, 8 losses, and 4 ties. Another hockey team had 8 wins, 8 losses, and 8 ties. Compare the number of orders for each team. Would you expect the number of orders to be higher or lower in the second team? So let's look at this and try and figure this out, all right? Okay, well, in the first one, we know there's 12 wins, 8 losses, 4 ties. So there's 24 all together, okay, 24 games all together, and we divide by the repeats of 12 wins, 8 losses, and 4 ties. And now that's for team number 1. Team number 2, we have 24 games, but this time we have 8 wins, 8 losses, and 8 ties. So 8 factorial over 8 factorial over 8 factorial. This one will give us a giant number such as this, and this one will even give us a bigger number. 
Why is the second team going to be larger than the first team? Well, let's look at the denominators. Each of these both have the same numerator, but the denominator of this one is going to be larger than the denominator of this one. So much so, so much so that this is going to be the larger one than this one. Then when we take this very large number and divide it by the larger number, we're expecting a smaller number in return. And that's how come we're going to have that and this, the second team is going to be much larger. Now, how many permutations are there if the letters in the word explain? If the words must be in alphabetical order. So n at a is equal to 7 factorial over 3 factorial. So there are, explain has 7 letters, okay, and the, uh, the um, vowels must be in alphabetical order. So they must be, so you treat the vowels as if they were just vowels. V, vowel, X, P, L, vowel, vowel, N. So basically, each of the three vowels have are specific vowels, so that you treat them as they're the same, they're treated the same, so 3 factorial. 7 factorial over 3 factorial will give us an answer of 840. So there are 840 permutations of the word explain. Example number 4. Sam has four different types of fruit. He has three pieces of each type. In how many ways could he arrange them on a platter? In a line, in three rows of four, and in two rows of six. So let's look at the first one. In a line means that I'm going to have 12 factorial of pieces of fruit. So three, four different types, three pieces each, divided by three factorial times three factorial times three factorial times three factorial. Because each of the four different types are three pieces. They repeat themselves three times. The next part is if I, so the answer to that is 369,600. So there are 12 fruits and three each on the bottom, three each of four types. Second part, I need to know in three rows of four. So 12 factorial over four factorial times four factorial times four factorial. Because again, we have three rows of four. So four in each row, so we're dividing by that. Now, that will give us, so again, 12 fruits, three rows of four. And the third one, in two rows of six, means that we're dividing by six factorial over six factorial, because there are 12 fruits and two rows of six on the bottom. All right, well, that's the end of the video, folks. Have a numerical day.